Hey, what up, beautiful people? Beautiful people, I hope you're doing all right, taking care of yourselves, loving on yourself. This is the Infinity Midwife coming to you. And for this Mother's Day special, first of all, I'm sending love to all mothers, especially Mother Earth, thanking all types of experience that we had with our mom and I'm sending love to everyone who um, who are having to heal from having motherly wounds, okay? And that is why I'm coming in with this message on this Mother's Day special, because I feel like, you know, um, for many of us on our journey to reclaiming our power, we have to do a lot of healing. We have to do a lot of healing in order to come into union with our own selves. Again, this is still pertaining to the collective shadow. And so today is going to be tied up into how, you know, we need to do more healing as it pertains to um, our motherly wounds, if ever we had some, our father's wounds as well. And so this is the perfect time to start doing the healing. So this is why I feel like today I needed to come with a message that will transcend not only, you know, the fact that yes, it is Mother's Day, but what are we doing in our day-to-day -day life to heal those wounds? I could be talking on a personal level how I had a lot of mother wounds because I grew up in an environment where my mom was not there with me. She, like, she... She was there until the age of five and then she, she just bounced for a very long time. So I had a lot of wounding in, as it pertains to like issues of abandonment, issues of rejection, issues of betrayal. And also I had to deal with some sort of intergenerational trauma as well. So that's a constant daily healing that I go about. And so because it is Mother's Day today, um, you know, some people are in very good situations with their mom where they're really well connecting. Some people have different different types of bonds with their moms. And so it's important that we recognize, you know, the type of bond that we have or the type of attachment that we have. Are we attached to our mothers in a healthy way or in an unhealthy way? And what can we do in order to recognize those those woundings? Because again, we are stepping away from this era of bondage where you know we were actively and and excessively living out in our masculine to the point that it became very robotic you know automatic autopilot way of living because we had this programming that we needed to function in a certain way in a certain a norm or certain standards of how you know life should be lived now that we're getting out of that cycle out of that era we are stepping into a more empowered individual and so what does that look like it looks like there's going to be a lot of veil coming down and there's going to be a lot of opportunities to heal and those woundings that most of us develop through childhood or we had to, you know, I call it the original sin, you know, whether it was with your parents, whether it was through abuse, whether it was through your education, you know, there was this initial separation when you came onto this earth that made you feel or that made you believe that you needed to forcefully live in your masculine essence fully and not ever having to having to deal with the feminine essence within you. And so because we are stepping in this cycle of coming back into union with ourselves, it is absolutely important, crucial even, that we start looking at the wounding that happened in our early childhood years or even our previous lifetimes or the type of generational wounding that transcended um, into our experience or into our lives. So we need to start looking at the type of wounding and that requires a lot of uh, compassion. It requires a lot of openness. It requires that we start looking at how we've lived our lives for so long, you know. Uh, nowadays, especially with, you know, the environment in which we're living and the context, 
the social economical context in which we're living a lot of people are being reflected back the type of life they've been having and you know for some it's it's easy to unwind or you know undo the wounding or do the healing or go through the healing process and for some others it's going to be real difficult because there was a lot of attachment a lot of beliefs that went into um reinforcing that ideology or that belief that you need to be living a certain way and live excessively in your masculine essence to a level of toxicity and so on mother's day i i encourage you all to look at the type of wounding that happened to you you know and the type of wounding usually is there not to hinder us but it looks like you know when we are in this victim victimization uh thinking or belief that you know things are happening to us we 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 tend to look at at our wounding at something that is is never going to heal uh, something that's is going to be you know an open scar for the rest of our lives but when we start looking at it from the perspective that that wounding you know was an opportunity for me to heal certain things that happened in my family that happened in you know um in my ancestral lineage so all these are opportunities for look at the deeper layers of ourselves and when we can come to that we will be empowered we will have done the healing and the healing is is not something that we do just overnight it is a process and and again, we are going to be reflective throughout our seasons, throughout our days, throughout the situation, the circumstances, people that come in contact, the people that we come in contact with. We're going to be reflective of how far we have gone in our healing process. So sometimes you're going to feel like, oh my God, like, you know, like this happened today to me and, you know, that reflected, that triggered me, you know, or that opened a wound of, or a childhood wound or, you know, the fact that I have to deal with, you know, a certain parent figure that wasn't there for me that triggers and that opens wounds. But those, you know, opening of the wounds or those triggers are opportunities for you to start looking at what did that wounded, that wounding meant for you, meant for you. And how can you start to um to heal that connection that was broken or that connection that was you know um that was tainted okay so it's not easy it's not an easy process but the minute that you start doing that you start walking away from that autopilot way of living you start questioning the types of belief, the types of attachment that you had and how you you had to live your life. And then you start walking towards union with your feminine essence. Because a lot of times when we don't look at our wounding, when we are shying away from it, when we are living on autopilot, is usually because there is, a, there is this unresolved issue that is lying beneath, that is lying deep within us. And when we start looking at you know the, those wounds we start doing the healing we start doing the healing process and then we we start coming to the realization that we don't need to live excessively out of our toxic masculine essence we don't have to overdo it we don't have to overthink it maybe we can just start to surrender within ourselves maybe you know we will get some some sort of guidance maybe we will start developing our intuition maybe we'll we will start accepting that not everything is fixed in this 3d reality and when we start doing the healing process we are going to step more into revelations more into uh feeling more empowered and then we're gonna just you know fall back a little bit you know fall back in just being, you know, and, and just being less worried, having less anxiety, less um, insecurities, because we will know that when we come into union with both our masculine essence, that is, is, is becoming less toxic, more healthy. And because we are doing the healing, we are allowing the feminine essence to show itself in our lives. And so, um, I think that I did post in, on my Instagram um, uh, a message about commitment, okay? And I feel like when we are committed to ourselves, 
Um, it can look different from one person to the other, but I will encourage you that in your discipline or your routine of applying that commitment towards yourself, okay? It can look very 3D physical, like training, eating the right foods, um, taking some time to um, exercise, taking some time to, to um, you know, to, to have this form of, to have this disciplined lifestyle. And that's very good. That's you uh, reflecting your masculine essence in a healthy way. Now, in order to get back to that healing where you are also reflecting the feminine within you in a healthy way, you're going to have to commit to a spiritual practice. And again, when we are talking about spiritual spirituality or spiritual practice, we are most of the time talking about passions. We're mostly talking about beauty. We're mostly talking about creations. And that, that can translate into any form of passion that is valid to you. It can be writing, it can be um, taking some time to just realize that there's beauty in, in your everyday living. It can be any form of art, uh, visual expressions, um, 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 you know, anything that can stimulate your senses through arts is how you're gonna start being committed to your feminine essence. And when I say this, I really speak from, from experience here, I'm not, you know, I try not to, you know, um, take what we have on, on social media and people speaking because there's a lot of information out there. But again, I try to be as authentic as possible. So when you start dedicating yourself to, to a way of life or a discipline of life, that is you acting out a healthy, that is you acting out on your healthy masculine essence. And that can translate into waking up early in the morning, you know, having a to-do list or, you know, um, finding, finding time to uh, sleep well, having your eight hours of sleep, eating right, um, reading a book, you know, all these things is how you're going to actualize on a healthy way of life. And that is going to be reflective of how healthy your masculine essence is, is being acted out in this 3D reality. Now, on the other hand, now what we, we start, we need to start working on, yes, by, by healing first, you know, but also by stepping into our rich, our spiritual practices even more. That can look like prayer. That can look like meditation. That can look like a form of artistic expression, whether it's through art, whether it's through uh, you being passionate about something. When you start exercising, and, and, and diving into uh, recognizing that your feminine essence needs to be just as stimulated and needs to you need to be as committed to your feminine essence just as you are to your masculine essence, you then come into union within yourself. And when you do that, come, when you do come into union within yourself, you will feel whole. This is what I call the divine union or the 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 dance the dance of the feminine essence and the masculine essence when you have both working at their optimal level that means when you are fully committed into developing a spiritual practice however that translates into your life and however you are committed to being or living a balanced life that's that's being into union that's coming into union with but with both within your masculine essence and your feminine essence and i feel like in the past era or this era of bondage we've been living in in this way of of living where the feminine essence was totally rejected was demonized was um was being put in a box was totally ignored and and all the people that had spiritual practice not necessarily religious but spiritual practices, you know, where you you had to uh, dive into the unknown, you know, the mysteries of life, nature, all these things were, were demonized. And so it was, a, it was groups of people that were practicing it in the dark, right? So there are a lot of intuitive people, healers, a lot of people that have, that have mastered 
the, the art of divination and but it's it's more than that okay we are coming out of that era of bondage where our feminine expression was totally ignored if not dismissed if not uh totally voided out of this reality this 3d reality but it was there it was always it was always there it was just being uh tapped into by certain known groups or certain people that had um that had the knowing that had the you know that had the certain knowledge that they kept to themselves that's why you had those secret societies that's why you, you had you know some form some forms of cult some some people you know would get together whether it's in a sisterhood or brotherhood you would have all these type of things where the feminine essence was was being practiced was being tapped into but now that we are coming out of that era of bondage we are being asked that in order for us to that in order for us to live in union within ourselves, yes, we need to have a masculine way of living that is balanced, that is healthy, that you know, that has a certain discipline to how we balance everything in our day-to-day -day life. But we also need to have that reliance on that feminine essence, that feminine essence of creation, of beauty, of everything that we are. Because in reality, we are feminine essence first and foremost so if we can get to any form of commitment towards developing a spiritual practice however that looks for you because some people are are tapped spiritually when they're doing arts when they're singing when they're writing poetry when they're when they're being humorous on stage when they are creating or baking cakes like it can look totally different from one person to another but when you are tapped and you are committed to adding those spiritual practice in your day-to-day -day life that's when you give respect to your feminine essence from within and you're going to get the guidance you're going to get the intuition you're going to get the synchronicities you're going to get you're going to get the gifts and the talents that you're going to utilize again through your passion through your committed uh, form of expression or your committed spiritual practice you're going to get gifted in such a way that you're going to recognize the feminine essence for who she has always been she has always been there nature mother mother nature uh, mother earth so this is why i feel like it's important today on mother's day the ultimate mother was always there guiding us and that is gaia mother earth and that is the elements that is a lot of things in the unseen that we don't necessarily pay attention to but if you are if you are giving to that spiritual practice if you are claiming that is it is your birthright to be in union within your 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 within yourself so with the masculine essence and the feminine essence you then start dancing the spiritual union between the two and that's when you start creating sacred geometry that's when you start being tapped into a way that you're not gonna necessarily need to feel anxious, worrisome, um, 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 insecure about you know how you're gonna create your life because it's, the dance is gonna be so intertwined and so organic and so true to your you, to your soul coding, to your soul, to your soul um, signature because it's gonna be something that is natural to you. That's when you're gonna feel empowered to be the best version of yourself. But first you need to do the healing. You need to recognize where the wounding happened, whether it's on your mom's side, whether it's on your dad's side, whether it's intergenerational trauma, whether it's intergenerational wounding, whether it's old beliefs, false beliefs, attachments that, not, that are not serving your higher purpose. When you do that, you can then start actualizing, you know, and implementing a discipline or a way of life that's going to bring your masculine out of that toxicity and into a more healthy way of living. And then you're gonna have to start tapping into your feminine by doing a spiritual practice, by committing to spiritual practice in a artistic way or however that translates to you. And when you start doing that and you start recognizing the feminine essence and the sacredness, you are gonna start trusting more into the unseen into the intuition into the divine guidance that is the feminine essence and when you do that you come into union with yourself and whatever dance is happening inside of you is going to be is going to be reflective as well on the external 
That's when you're going to start attracting situations, opportunities to express more of your divine feminine with your divine masculine. Yo, you guys, that was my message for today. I just want to say, you know, happy Mother's Day. I hope you're doing the healing. You are worthy. You are loved. Just as we are all loved and worthy. And this is worthy. Like, this is worth it. At the end of the day, if you listen to the words that's coming out of my mouth, you are going to find valuable information. Share it. Like. Whatever it is that you do on social media, do it. And we will keep on bringing in the message. Because... We are all worthy. Peace.